Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, I'm going to be doing a UI overview of Ableton Live. UI stands for User Interface, and it's essentially what we're looking at here. It's a thing we're going to be clicking around in to manipulate and change to affect music and sounds and achieve our musical goals. So I want to start off this video by kind of explaining the methodology of the design of Ableton Live, because I think it'll help you a lot. Live was designed to have no pop-ups, no windows. Nothing will pop up and obscure something else. This is very important because they had to, everything had to fit on one screen on little, the, the, the brick MacBook from back in the day. It's a very small resolution and everything had to fit on there and you had to easily move between different views. You know, you wouldn't want a window to pop up and then that to move around. You know what I mean? Like FL Studios like that where I, half the time I don't know where everything is because I'm spoiled in Ableton Live. If I want to do a thing and I want to open up like a channel strip or something, I know where it is. Or uh, if I want to edit the MIDI, I can expect to know where it is like 100% of the time. So once you get into something called flow, this is very helpful. You don't have to think about what, like the means to do something. You can just do it. And that helps you maintain flow and uh, creativity. And I hope you experience that because it's really awesome. So Ableton Live is made up of panels. And these panels cannot be closed. They can only be collapsed. Like they don't actually go away. They just kind of collapse. And the first panel that we're going to look at is an important one. And I'm going to highlight it right here in yellow. This is the info panel. And when we hover over it, it is self-aware. It's, you know, it's, is it? That have intelligence? I don't know. It is self-aware though. It knows that it's the info view because we hovered over it. It'll tell us what it is. And if we go up to a very important button up to the top here, the play button, the, yeah, it just says, yeah, it's a play button. Cool. We know what a play button is. And if we go over to the square thing, what's that? That is the stop button, right? So you can hover over anything and it will give you information about what that thing is and what it does which is very useful. So I hope you leave that open and you have that open because it's going to help you along your way. Super Mario Brothers 3 reference. Um, if you don't see it, you can go up to view and uh, hit info if it's unchecked, right? I just unchecked it and it disappeared. But if you want it to kind of come back, I want you to get a, a piece of paper. And I want you to write some shortcuts down. Uh, they're not going to be a whole bunch of them. This isn't Blender. There's some shortcuts you got to know, though. You probably count them on one hand. First one is holding shift and pressing the question mark. That will make the info view pop up again, right? That is an important shortcut for that. So that's like, that's one of maybe five shortcuts I'm going to be telling you. So uh, keep that in mind. This will always help you. And it doesn't go away. It's always there, which is pretty cool. Next up is a very important section. Important panel. This is the main view of Ableton Live. This is the session and arrangement view. This is, think of it as two separate paradigms, right? This is the session view. When we take our mouse over here and we click on this, that is the arrangement view. And then we can click on this again. That is a session view. So get your uh, pen out again and write down a very important shortcut. It's tab. Tab switches between a session and arrangement. So we press tab and we can switch back and forth. And I don't even have my mouse there, right? Switching back and forth. So let's uh, keep pressing tab until you find the session view. This is the session view here because, you know, things are, things are vertical. So session view is nonlinear. There's no concept of time. There's no timeline in this, 
right? It's at a, like a, a higher dimension than uh, audio in terms of a, a linearity, right? So, for example, you take a like a Nickelback song. It's three minutes long or whatever. At zero minutes, zero seconds, it starts. And then at zero minutes, zero six seconds, the guy starts playing the guitar. That is a linear... That's how we experience um, audio and uh, things like that, right? It's, it's a very linear experience. Session doesn't have any of that. Uh, each clip has a time that it has, but the overall, how everything mishmashes together, everything it doesn't fall on a timeline. So you can have like a really long clip and a really short clip and... The, if they'll be um, not beat matched, but they'll be the same kind of tempo and they'll play and cycle through at the same time. And there's no kind of timeline aspect of this mode, which is good for creativity and getting ideas down and auditioning things and moving things around in terms of uh, their idea. So Ableton works with things called clips and a clip is an idea and a clip can be anything like it can be a wave it can be an mp3 it can be a video it can be a midi it can be anything and it's uh, very useful to understand this so this session view once you have ideas that you're happy with you can import them not even import them these are these are linked they're not separate things you can actually just drag them in to the arrangement view and it'll act just the same and this is a linear way of going about things so that we're gonna we're gonna prove that to ourselves that this is a linear way of doing things that when we hit the play button up here you'll notice that that line plays and we know that there's the seconds down here right and that's very linear right I'll hit stop and then I'll hit stop again Right? I clicked it twice so that it would go back to the, the start position, right? So you double click on stop to, to, to do that. I did that via muscle memory. So let's go over to our session view and let's hit play. Uh, nothing happens. Um, there are these uh, playheads here, but these are these don't have anything in them and they're completely uh, agnostic to time in the the general theme of things right if you have a loop in session view it will play forever until um your computer quantum tunnels into another dimension it'll probably continue playing on in there um this this area doesn't care about this area and what this playhead is doing Right. This is all going to become. I'm planting seeds. This is going to become very clear as the uh, video series goes on. These are linked. Right. You can actually use them both at the same time. It's not just making things in a session in these things called cells, and then dragging them over to arrangement. You can arrange things and then go back to session to jam more, find something, and then go back to uh, arrangement and bring them in, and vice versa. You know, you can do a bunch of really cool stuff and once you once you can grasp that concept of jamming and auditioning and using clips and then bringing them in and all that stuff you're gonna have a great time it's uh really uh really positive so i'm gonna hit the space bar to stop that and uh things like that and that is the general arrangement session view very important so next up is the browser the browser section is right here in this panel and the browser is just a means to populate the session slash arrangement panel like right you just drag things in from here right from here to here right you're just dragging things from here to here and you know vice versa in in some situations Right? This is just a way to populate it. That's basically it, really. Um, let me uh, highlight that again. So this 
is the browser. There is a number of things that it holds. It holds things in separate categories, and then categories you set up yourself. So just briefly, uh, these are the kind of Ableton uh, ways of organizing things. So you have your sounds, right? I have this category selected. I can just click on it. I have, you know, ambient, evolving, bass, brass, effects, pad, things like that. Drums, all sorts of drums. I can grab this friend here and move that down and explore. I can use my mouse wheel as well. I'm sure if you're on a trackpad, you can use your two fingers. You have your instruments. These are Ableton devices. These are sound generators, your audio effects, which affect audio, MIDI effects, which we'll get into, Max for Live stuff, which we'll also get into, uh, plugins, which are very personable. You can, are personal. You uh, bring plugins in, and what this does is this expands the ability of Ableton Live. You know, external uh, VSTs, you've probably heard of that bring them in, and you can make really cool sounds with those. Clips, these are, you know, you know, all encompassing like Ableton ideas. And then we have samples. Yours, yours might look a little different. You know, all the samples and sounds here, uh, you know, yours might, you know, look different. Down here would be packs. These packs are downloadables from your Ableton Live account. And it used to be you would have to download them and then install them from the site. Now it's just integrated within the browser. You see that download button and it will install things. I have a couple neat things in here, drum machines and all that fun stuff. The user library is your personal library. Uh, say if you save grooves and stuff like that, this will be uh, automatically populated in here. So we'll get into that. Your current project, this is very useful because we don't actually have a project going on right now, but if we had a bunch of stuff happening, a bunch of clips and audio and effects and stuff, and we had you know a project we were working on, all the files associated with it would appear in this folder. So that is uh, you know very useful because you don't have to hunt down for things and try to find stuff. It's all there. So there's that. And then we have the add folder, so we can add our own folders and things like that. But you don't even need to do that. You can drag and drop things directly from your desktop and things will populate. So very important. The browser, again, is just a means to populate the session and arrangement views. I'm going to set it to session. You don't give it enough attention. So that is the browser. Uh, I want to bring some attention up to the top here. This is, I guess, the transport view. This isn't necessarily a panel, but it's always there. And what this houses is a, uh, options and things that are very useful to music production and that you need immediate access to. So, for example, uh, the play and stop and record button. Right, those are up there, uh, where your arrangement position starts, loop positions, things like that. But you don't need to necessarily worry about this area, right? Which is like a really confusing looping section um, for first timers. There's multiple ways of going about the same result, and instead of setting up the time and the looping, and like setting the loop in and loop out point. You can actually just highlight an area, right click, and then loop it. So there's multiple ways about going about things. Over here is the tempo control. So, you know, if we look at the the helper box in the lower left again, it'll say that is this is the tempo. This is how many, uh, you know, the, the BPM of the track. Right now it's set to 120 and all of that. Your time signatures, uh, things called phasing up and nudging. This is for synchronizing it to um, another instance of Ableton or a track that you started kind of separately or is lagging behind a little. You can bump it up just a tiny bit more. Useful things like that. And the metronome and things like that. We'll get into all that a little bit later. Over here is kind of like, you know, 
the misfit area. So we have things like automation. We can um, switch from the pen mode to the mouse mode, which is pretty neat for certain things. We'll get into that. This is, that's a way to change things over time. And there's the computer MIDI keyboard and then the uh, resource or CPU load meter, which isn't a CPU meter, and then the disk overload detection and then some uh, IO stuff. So all the things that need to be kind of readily available and that you know need to be visible but shouldn't be hidden behind a menu are up at the top here. And it's very well laid out, in my opinion. And there's always room for more. Um, they In 10, they added something called Capture MIDI, which is really cool. It's essentially always listening to the MIDI notes that you're playing. So when you're jamming, you could be like, oh, I, I really liked what I did there. You don't actually have to re-record it again. You can just hit that button and it'll print it down. Just wanted to kind of point that out. So next up is the device and clip view. Now this is one that's very confusing. Um, it confused me when I first started up. It's this bottom panel here. This houses many things. This houses clip information and things on your effects chain. And it's contextual depending on what you're doing. So this changes into multiple different things, but essentially it will display the, uh, the, the effects and synths, synths that you have on each channel when you select a channel, and we'll, we'll get into that. And it will also, if you click on a clip, which is an idea, it will display the audio or the MIDI or what have you, and you can manipulate things down there. So this one might be a little bit tricky to wrap your head around, uh, but once you get it, um, you'll understand it. And I'll kind of bring us through it um, very slowly in the next video. I'm going to be talking about clips. So that is that. Let me get rid of that. Each of these panels can be resized. You can drag the uh, the panel uh, border and move them around, right? Make them big, make them small. And uh, you can click on these uh, these triangle things here, and that will actually kind of collapse it, right? And if we wanted to bring that back in, we can click on it again, and it'll appear again. Like it doesn't, you don't actually close it, it just collapses. And that's useful because you know, if you close it and you're just like, I want to open that window again, right? You want to open it where, you know, it was. You don't want to go to view and then open it, right? So, yeah, a lot of things are um, uh, movable and expandable, and it, it just works a dream. So that would be the basic UI overview. I hope you enjoyed that video. And, yeah, take care and have a good one. See you soon.